Hello, you're watching Every TV. Welcome to English News Broadcast. These are the top stories. Message of congratulations continue. Twenty-three patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today. The global COVID-19 case and death toll continue to rise. And at least 50 people killed in a village in Democratic Republic of Congo. President Dr. Arif Alvi of the Republic of Pakistan and President Louis Adbidar of the Dominican Republic sent messages of congratulations to the people and government of Eritrea in connection with the 30th Independence Day anniversary. In their messages, the leaders wish good health to President Issa Safurki and peace and success to the Eritrean people. In his message, President Dr. Arif Alvi said Pakistan gives high consideration to the brotherly relations with Eritrea, which is deeply embedded in a shared trust, history, values, and culture, and that the existing bonds of friendship and cooperation will be further strengthened to the mutual benefit of the people of the two countries. Mr. Roberto Alvarez, Minister of Foreign Affairs to the Dominican Republic, extended his best wish to Mr. Osman Saleh, Minister of Foreign Affairs. We have an announcement from the Ministry of Health. 23 patients have been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today at quarantine centers in Asmara 22 Central Region and Mandifara 1 Southern Region. On the other hand, two patients who have been receiving medical treatment in hospital in the Central Region have fully recovered and have been discharged from this facility. The total number of recovered patients to date has accordingly risen to 3,855, while the number of deaths stands at 14. And the total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has increased to 4,117. Minister of Health, Asmaram, June 1st, 2021. The governor of the Gashbaka region, Ambassador Mohamed Ali Hurui, conducted a tour of inspection in Karkabat subzone from May 25 to 27 to assess the progress of the social service provision and institutions. The tour of inspection included the construction of the road linking Amalite and Haranite, the potable water project in the administrative area of Lokaib, Atai, Agamit, and in other areas, the construction of schools in the administrative areas of Atai, Agmait, and Akaida, as well as the progress community-based vegetable farming in Atai administrative area and the activities of the Agmait Health Station. According to reports, the developmental projects are being conducted in cooperation with Adhalo Project, Construction Development of the Gashbaka Region, Ministry of Education Branch of the Region, as well as Karkabat Administrative Area and the public. At the meeting conducted with the residents of the administrative areas, the ambassador expressed readiness of the regional administration to play a deep part in the implementation of the various projects. Ambassador Mohammed Ali Jabra, Secretary of the PFDJ in the Gashbaka region, Engineer Idris Ibrahim, Director General of Construction Development, and Mr. Abu Karim Idris took part in the tour of inspection. A three months vocational training was organized to 107 youths in a sub zone. The training included beauty salon and editing. Mr. Mharat Ab Andamariam, head of the National Union of Eritrean Youth and Students Branch in Adai Sabzon, said the objective of the training was to develop the capacity of the youth and enable them to become self-supportive. Mr. Habtesgi Tasfazgi, administrator of the Sabzon, called on the youth to properly use the opportunity they were provided and transfer their knowledge to fellow youth in their areas. At the event, Inda Maso Award was handed over to 35 outstanding students. Stating that most of the awardees were female students, Mr. Bayena Tasfai, head of education office and the South Zone called on parents to conduct regular follow-up on the educational performance of their children. <coughs> now international news is next after a short break. Welcome back. The total number of confirmed COVID-19 cases globally surpassed 171.7 million today, with the death toll exceeding 3.5 million. 
and the number of recovered patients has exceeded 154 million, this according to World Meters. The World Health Organization has approved the emergency use of the COVID-19 jab made by Sinavoc, proving the way for a second vaccine produced in China to be distributed among developing countries. The UN Health Agency gave the green light to the two short vaccine today at the jab meets, rather, as the jab meets international standards for safety, efficacy and manufacturing, this according to a statement from the organization. Peru has announced a sharp increase in its COVID-19, giving the South American nation the worst COVID-19 related death rate per capita in the world. In an announcement from the presidential palace yesterday, the country said more than 180,000 people had died since the start of the pandemic, up from the previous data indicating that more than 69,000 Peruvians had died due to the coronavirus. At least 50 people have been killed in two overnight attacks in the Democratic Republic of the Congo's deeply troubled east, this according to the military official and monitors. A local official blamed the Allied Democratic Forces ADF, which has been linked to the ISIS group. Military spokesman Julius Ngongo said that ADF fighters attacked the villages of Bonga and Techabi in the eastern Ituri region. The two villages lie on the border between North Kivu and Ituri provinces in an area where the ADF is believed to be active. Other sources said the attacks may have been ethnic in origin. One community leader said children and the elderly were among the victims. The DRC army gave a slightly higher provincial toll of 53 after a meeting of security forces in Bunia, the capital of Aturi province. Local MP Janessa Grassen said at least 60 people were killed. China has relaxed its family planning policy to allow couples to have three children after a census showed its population was rapidly aging, said media reported in an attempt to boost the birth rate in the world's most populous nation. For nearly 40 years, China enforced a controversial one-child policy, one of the firmest family planning regulations anywhere in the world. It was first relaxed in 2016 with a two-child policy due to widespread concerns about an aging workforce and economic stagnation. Despite government efforts to encourage couples to have children, China's annual births have continued to decline, falling to a rec record low of 12 million in 2020, this according to the National Bureau of Statistics. China's fertility rate stands at 1.3, below the level needed to maintain a stable population. That's it for today. Now let's remind you the top stories. Sets of congratulations continue. 23 patients diagnosed positive for COVID-19 and tests carried out. The global COVID-19 case and death toll continue to rise. And at least 50 people killed in a village in Democratic Republic of Congo.